welcome to Portimao, host of the grand finale of ELMS 2023. It's going to be an incredibly jam-packed weekend for you all, and we're treating you to not one, but two races, starting off with the four hours of Algarve on Friday and moving on to the four hours of Portimao on Sunday. Now, this is an incredible racetrack filled with twists and turns, and it's not called the Portuguese roller coaster for no reason. 4.6 kilometers, 16 turns, it's going to provide some fantastic racing. Now, Algarve Pro Racing actually have the home advantage here, so let's take a look inside the team and see what they can make of it. I'm, I'm at the team's home in, in the Algarve region of Portugal, in Portimao. Uh, it's very lovely, always, always a, nice, a nice fun track to race at and always great for the team. My name is James Allen, I'm driver of the number 25 Algarve Pro Racing LMP2 car. It's tough. I think I think I've I've done this track quite a, a few times. So I've I mean I've raced here for seven. I've raced in LMS for seven years now. So I definitely feel quite confident here. But then at the same time, I also have that pressure of again of winning a championship and trying to do the best I can. But we have two races, and it's very easy to to sort of let that lead come down. I think it'll be definitely be down to us not making very many mistakes and just being able to capitalize on what we have. Um, but for sure, I mean, Duquesne and both and Turkey for the overall championship are, are very close, and it, it doesn't take a lot for us in two races to let them catch up. So I think it'll definitely be a very interesting weekend. Well, there's no, there's, every race comes with pressure because we go there to win. And when you go to win, there's always some expectation and the most of the expectation comes from within. So the pressure for every race we do is there, but it's not really pressure, it's expectation and what we expect of ourselves and everybody pushes hard to achieve that. We should be champions, but you cannot ever count anything, take anything for granted. We were on, I think James was on the front row of the grid here last year, and John Faub took the start and got taken out first corner. So, like the previous race in Spa, look what happened to Duquesne, look what happened to United, it put them on the back foot. Uh, Duquesne suffered a lot of car damage, so they lost a bit of performance, so it made it difficult for them. But equally, the first race in Barcelona, we were leading by a country mile. For sure I'm feeling good about the weekend and I definitely would like to be champion. That's, I think that goes the same for everyone in the team and everyone up and down the paddock. I think for sure it's, it's fine now, it's very calm now, but I think we'll all get a bit fired up as the weekend progresses. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's been a long journey. A tiring one. Now this is a very atypical weekend here for ELMS. With double the races, it throws the strategy all up in the air. Now we asked some of the drivers what they thought would play out this weekend. So it's the first time for ELMS, uh, at least for me that I'm doing ELMS, that we have two races in one weekend. Uh, obviously, you want to stay out of trouble in the first one because you still have a second race to go. Um, so, but obviously, in both races, we go full attack. We want to win. Uh, we need to score a lot of points. So, there is no holding back on that. Yeah, for sure, we have two races this weekend. But uh, race one is gonna be. I think we're gonna go aggressive. We there is no way, like, we're going to do it every uh, same as every race we have done every season. After the first race, we only need P7, but we, a P7 is not good for us. We want to end in a very good way, and we, we still want to destroy, so we want to win both of, our, of the races here in Portimao. We know we can do it, we have the pace, it's just doing it, and by doing it, we need to be aggressive, and for sure we're going to be that. Uh, Friday's race and Sunday is going to be very different, so 
We'll review everything with the team, see how is the tire allocation, and see how we can, of course, maximize the performance from the car and from the team, uh, obviously, to get the best result possible in the race. Uh, we're here to win the championship, we're going to push, we win, want to win both races, you know, and I think that's uh, the best way to do it. We cannot count points, we will just go full attack and uh, hopefully be as smart as usual and, and make it overall. Double the races means double the workload for these drivers. Now behind us we have AF Corsa, they're going to let us have a look into their physiotherapy department, so let's have a chat with one of their osteopaths. Any endurance racing, to be honest, I think it's really important to have a physio. Um, we're in the car for much longer periods of time compared to junior series, sprint series, especially this weekend in Portimao, we have the two four-hour races, so making sure your body's 100% ready and recovered from every session to be ready for the next one is very important. You know, it's, uh, you work all season to be um, you know, champions, and if you finish the first four-hour race, have some pain and you don't recover quickly for the second four-hour race, you know, it can be the deciding factor between um, you know, feeling good in the car, bad in the car, making mistakes. Uh, we're very lucky to have an amazing physio like Nico with us here and uh, it makes a big difference in, in any endurance racing, but especially this weekend in Portimao. So my name is Nicolas, I'm a osteopath for the team I have Corsé, a car number 83. For this kind of weekend, it's a bit special to race in a few days. So yeah, we have a, a big, big uh, job. Uh, there is a lot of kind of pain, honestly. It's uh, for sure the neck is one of the parts uh, most uh, used. But uh, uh, yeah, we check uh, everything because everything is, uh, is really important. For example, the legs for the brakes. I might change my seat a little bit actually, because with this one, you know, since we did the new seat in Paul Ricard, Yes. With this one, I just have like a, like where my uh, ass is, there's like a, a small bit. And it's, yeah. It like doesn't give me any support, it just puts pressure, you know. Okay, and you think it, it's the seat or just the, the, the muscle who, uh, who work too much? Uh, I think it's just the seat. Okay. It's like a uh, pressing, you know. I'm ah, okay. Pressure. Okay. So yeah, Ben uh, uh, is painful uh, today uh, on the right glutes because the, the seat is not perfect. They, uh, they can feel some pain or some... Uh, Tension, especially in LMP2, because the, the knees are really bent, so the G-force are really high, and the, the glutes are there to, uh, to 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 maintain. It's not like in real life when you you have some patient, uh, you just treat because they are in pain. Here is most uh, uh, global thing. How do you feel, Ben? Très bon. Très bon. <laughs> uh, okay, Thank I you. think you are ready to uh, ready to, to score the. The championship. Yes, yeah? I think so. <laughs> I really hope. Thank you. Thank you. Cars on the grid for the first of two races this weekend. Friday, it's the four hours of the Algarve. Let's take a look how they line up in our classes. In LMGCE, Arnold Robin clinched pole position for the number 72 TF Sport Aston Martin. In LMP3, it was Team Virage's number 8 machine on pole with Manuel Espirito Santo. In LMP2 Pro Am, Alexander Matchell claimed his first pole position in the number 19 Team Virage machine. James Allen claimed the overall pole for Algarve Pro Racing in their number 25 LMP2 Orica on the home soil.
possible. Direction is 90 degrees different. Here we go for the start of this unique double race weekend. Pole position for Algarve Pro on the left-hand side of the screen. Red lights on, four hours of Algarve is go. Good start from the pole man and behind him here comes Paul Lafarge from Edex Sports as well. Down the inside to the yellow and green. Not a great start for Rui Andrade with into Europol and the Duquesne car as well on the inside of Manuel Maldonado in the Panis car. So Rene Binder in the green and black trying to make a move. Panis car locking up. Manuel Maldonado runs out wide, loses the spot. There's Binder right in front. So that is fourth. Up to fourth place, Rene Binder from fifth on the grid. The inside line worked a little better off the start. Lots of close racing in LMP3. There's United's 22 car trying to go a long way around the outside. And Phil Hansen takes fourth. Here's the battle for second. 77, Christian Reed for Proton. Johnny Larson for racing formula in the Ferrari going around the outside. The Aston Martin ahead is the leader. Reed into turn two, hanging on in second place. Johnny Larson in third, and the next Aston Martin in fourth. Here's the LMP3 lead battle. Leonard Weiss chasing Matt Bell in the number 11 Euro International car. And they're leaving the rest behind them a little. Down into turn one, Tony Wells on the inside here of Alexander Bukantsov, moves up into fifth in LMP3. That's a good pass. And that's an absolutely classic Portimao move down the hill into turn one. Three-way lead battle in GTE, Arnold Robin for TF Sport in the Aston, ahead of Christian Rees Porsche and Johnny Larson in the Formula Racing Ferrari. Kevin Simpson rushing away out front for Algar Pro, track declared wet, rain lights on, there is rain in Portimao. On board with a 65 Panis car. This is Manuel Maldonado. Look at the heavy dark clouds in front. Little light sprinkling of rain. Looks pretty slippy already. Oh, trouble at the hairpin. That's Henrik Hedman in the Dragon Speed car in the barriers. Alexander Bukantsov, and that's Paul Lafar. Couldn't avoid him on the exit of turn one. A spinning LMP3 car got slightly collected there. The forecast was not great, and this is very wet weather indeed. Absolutely torrential rain, and everybody scrambling for wet weather tyres in the pit lane. Trouble for Sally Yollett, she's in the gravel. That's the LMP2 Pro Am points leaders, and just runs out of grip. The Turkish driver in the gravel, and that is a real setback for their title hopes. Had a four point advantage coming here after Spa. And that is bound to disappear in the rain. Leader, slow down. We are under safety car. Leader, slow down. We are under safety car. Good news for Racing Team Turkey. Sally Olic has been pushed out of the gravel. He's on his way again. Back to green flag racing. Sun's out. The track is streaming wet. Algar Pro lead away. United in second. Duquesne in third from Panis. Cool racing and Edex Sport. And visibility as well as grip will be at an absolute premium. Tony Wells in the Nielsen car trying to go the long way around the outside there in turn one. Didn't quite happen. But in these low grip conditions, the LMP3 cars are nearly as quick as P2s. Trouble for Jens Muller in the GMP Aston Martin. Loops it around out of turn four. Here he comes, look, up the hill. Little contact with the back of Duncan Cameron, Spirit of Race Ferrari. Luckily, as he spins, everybody else manages to avoid him. But the safety car is out, and that's because Johnny Larson didn't manage to keep it out of the gravel. Big looping spin for the Formula Racing Ferrari driver, firmly buried. Another close miss for Paul Lafargue in the sixth place Edex Sport LMP2 car. What happens here? Oh, looping round, up the brow, manages to avoid everything. God, oh, that was close though. Giorgio Roder ahead of Tom Van Rompuy. Oh, contact Van Rompuy ran into the back of the Proton LMP2 car. They're in a Pro Am battle. Here's the battle for second in GTE. Ben Tuck for TF Sport in the Aston. And Martin Berry in the JMW Ferrari. 
Couldn't find the grip there, the yellow and black JMW car. Now he's got the uh, Spirit of Race car closing in right behind him. TF Sport, though, go 1-2 with the Aston Martins in the rain. Duncan Cameron down the inside. He moves up into third ahead of Martin Berry and Jim McWhirter's Ferrari. James Allen taking over from race leader Kiffin Simpson at Algarve Pro. The Aussie in, Rene Binder handing over as well, and it's Nicolas Pino who will take over the number 30 car. Here's the battle for third. Look at this replay. This is the Panis car of Team and van der Helm and Nicolas Pino in the Duquesne car. Only five minutes into the stint, door handle to door handle from the two of them, and the Panis driver makes third his. Replay at the hairpin into your pole. That's number 13. That's the LMP3 leader, Miguel Cristoval. That's the Portuguese driver looping it around. No damage, but time lost. Trouble for Team Virage. That's South African driver Nick Adcock. Still very slippery offline. Double loop and triple salco from the number eight car. Oli Caldwell pressing Laurence Herhor in the Edex Sport car. This is the battle for sixth place. Both Edex Sport and into Europol looking for a podium here. And Oli Caldwell all over the back of Laurence Herhor. Trying to go the long way around the outside. They go either side of the Proton Porsche. And the 77 car, oh, a little contact there from the inter Europol car, just the tiniest of touches perhaps. But those two Proton Porsches swept out of the way by the LMP2 cars. Oh, trouble for Proton, that's their P2 Pro-Am car, Giorgio Roda. And that is a massive debris field. It looks as though it's got all its wheels. Giorgio Roda out of the car safely, but the safety car is coming out for clear up. Back to green, there's the race leader from Algarve Pro and behind is the LMP2 lead battle with the white and black, that's the AF Corsa 83 car, Ben Barnicote, and right behind him in the slipstream and pulling out now is Ben Hanley. So the two Bens going for the lead in LMP2, they're both going to unlap themselves on the race leader. And through goes Ben Barnicote, Ben Hanley is right there with him though in that battle for the lead in LMP2 Pro-Am. And James Allen in the blue and black Algarve Pro machine, the outright race leader, just letting them get on with it. It's not his fight, well, not yet anyway. On board with Team van der Helm out of turn two. That's the Pro-Am DKR engineering car in front. He's just going by, putting a lap on them. The great car behind though, Rashad Dejeras from Cool Racing. That's his rival now. For third place overall, Dejeras gets a really clean run over turn four, down into the hairpin at five, and through he goes. Van der Helm just a little offline coming out of turn two and up the hill through turn three. Lost vital momentum, loses a place. Matt Griffin in a green and white Sprinter Race Ferrari second in LMGTE, and here comes Gianmarco Lavorato in the Proton competition number 77 car, started by Christian Reed, looking down the inside, got a good run out of the final turn, and moves up to second place in GTE at turn one. And that means Proton competition Porsches are one, two again. James Allen, the race leader. Under pressure now from Nicolas Pino from Duquesne. You can see how much of a dry line there is, which is good because it allows you to use slick tyres and go quicker. The bad side of that is it's not grippy offline on the wet stuff, so you have to be very committed. Uphill into 13, he had a little sniff. There's Gilles Duquesne, the team boss. Did he get through? Yes, he did. That is a big move. Nicolas Pino takes the lead of the race for Duquesne. We'll take a look again up the inside. And the Algarve Pro car actually on the wet outside line. James Allen making a mistake under pressure. And from Pino's viewpoint, look how much drier the track that he was using was. Driver change at Algarve Pro. Strapping in Alex Lynn, looks like he'll be into the end of the race. Marcus Siebert taking over the number 17 cool racing car. They're just making a little adjustment to get the lights working on the back. 
Ooh, a lurid spin there, but you can see the left rear light not working, and that is bad news for them. Race leader in GTE is in. Zach Robichon handing over to Alessio Picariello and real drama now. Okay, safety car, safety car, be careful. The car is on fire at T13. And that is the number 13 into Europol car. Was third in LMP3, Wyatt Brickercheck, the American driver. Ah, and there's Maurice Smith, the American driver at Cool Racing. Back to Green Flag Racing, 37 minutes on the clock. What on earth is going to happen now? Alex Lynn from Duquesne's Neil Jarney. The green and black and a big blow up or a lock up from Neil Jarney. Maybe a lock up. They're in the middle of traffic. And Alex Lynn under pressure. There's the Duquesne team watching. And there is their man in green and black. Black and blue is Algar Pro and contact from behind perhaps, or a spin from Neil Jarney. Whatever it is, he's out of the battle for second and he'll be lucky if nobody hits him there. Gilles Duquesne, can't believe it. Let's take a look again. Here he comes down the hill. Did he get a curve on the inside? No, I think it was contact from the Spirit of Race Ferrari from behind. Neil Jarney, very unfortunate there. The white and green Ferrari clattered him from behind. South African David Perel at the wheel. But of course, the P2 cars stopped quicker than the GTEs in a shorter distance. Algar Pro still leading from United and Panis. In the championship, Algar Pro heading to the title from Panis and Duquesne. If Duquesne move up onto the podium in the race, though, they'll move to second in the standings here. It is that close. All the Proton competition battle for the lead of the race. 16, Alessio Picariello, Julian Andlauer in the 77 car goes the long way round the outside. Does he hang on? He does not. The pole sitting car stays in front. It's a Porsche 123 as well with the 60 Iron Lynx car in third ahead of the best of the Ferraris, the car of Kessel Racing. And the Aston Martins that led in the rain have faded. LMP2 Pro-Am lead battle, Mathieu Vaxivier ahead of Cool Racing's Malta Jakobsen. Malta bounces over the kerbs. The Dragon Speed car is between them. There's half a second in it. They need to get by other traffic as well as they continue their battle. 65 Panis car now up behind here. Of course, a machine of Mathieu Vaxivier looks to go the long way around the outside of the top of the hill. Vaxivier says, no, I need that bit of tarmac if you don't mind. And he really does, because look how close Marty Jakobsen is in the grey cool racing car up to 13. Can't get through on the inside. The Panis car has it. Jakobsen spins. Looping spin for Marty Jakobsen. Oh, it was contact from behind. Look, the Pro-Am Algarve Pro car spun and hit him. 77 on the inside for the lead. This is Julian Andlau trying to hold off Alessio Picariello. The two pros on Porsches there. One, two ahead of the Iron Lynx Porsche in third. 77 the better placed in the championship battle. And it looks as though Alessio Picariello is going to sit behind. Mathieu Vaxivier for AF Corsa, still under pressure for the lead in LMP2 Pro-Am. This time though, it's the blue and red Nielsen car of Matthias Besch in contact there as they come up the hill out of turn three. The racing team Turkey car, the red car, is a lap behind after they went into the gravel early on. Don't worry about the DKR car, but there's the change for the lead. Nielsen up into the lead of Pro-Am, runs into the back of the car of Louis Delatraz, the racing team Turkey machine. Close battles everywhere, none closer than this for the overall race win. Alex Lynn and Ollie Jarvis, Algar Pro just inches ahead of the 22 United car to factory racing endurance pros here. This is edge of the seat stuff. There's Algar Pro's joint owner, Sam Cox. Sam and husband Stuart Rum, the team, have done for many years. Alex Lynn just ahead of Ollie Jarvis, and this could just change in a heartbeat in traffic with only a little over 10 minutes of the race remaining. And 
this is why these guys are so good. They know where the gaps are. Jarvis down the inside. Has he overdone it? Has he outbraked himself around the long way, running off track? Alex Lynn shouldn't take advantage there. He's going to have to allow Oli Jarvis to go by. And he does, but not by much. Jarvis leads for United. There's the reaction in the United garage. Oli Jarvis leading. This doesn't matter so much to Algarve Pro. They would love to win this race, but their eyes are on the main prize, and that is trying to seal the championship title. No, we do not need to win the race to become champion, but if we can, we will. Well, that's very clear to Alex Lynn, isn't it? If you can win, do, but you must finish. And there's another race on Sunday. They might have a chance to win that one too. Right now, though, it looks like Oli Jarvis and United are heading to victory. That looks pretty clear cut, but what about the GTE battle? What is going on with the two Proton cars? Again, with the turquoise nose, Alessio Picariello trying to take the lead of the race away from Julian Andlauer in the 77 car. Now, 1 2 would be nice and much nicer than neither car finishing after contact. Okay, guys, last lap, calm down now, might be the radio message. Everything crossed at Cool Racing, and it is success. <laughs> and victory, the champions. The number 17 crew from Cool Racing clinch the LMP3 title with one race remaining. Stop what you're doing. Super happy, super happy. You know, uh, it was. It's been a really, really, really competitive year. You know, it was. It's been a really, really, really perfect year. To be honest, you know, we've been fighting all the year long. You know, everything was planned, and yeah, like every at the end, we just needed to put all together this this race, and at the end, we put it. So I think uh, we, Marcos, Chila, and me did. Uh, it couldn't be better. You know, I think we fully deserve it, and I think uh, it's the best thing thing that we could have done, you know, just bring the car home and yeah, I'm just happy. <laughs> and the LMP2 race winners, the number 22 United Autosports crew. Yeah, I mean, just a fabulous race. Um, difficult to actually know what happened in the car. I mean, went from dry to wet. Um, so many amazing calls from the team on strategy with tyre choice. Um, and then the last stint at the end to, to come from the back all the way through, um, incredible. Big thanks to my two teammates and the team who did a, an incredible job. Penultimate LMP2 Pro-Am win of the season for Cool Racing's 37 trio. Alex Kwanyi, Malte Jakobsen and Ndiko Lapierre. And the Proton duo did settle down and sort themselves out. Junior Landlauer takes the chequered flag. Victory for the 77 car he shares with Gianmarco Leverato and team boss Christian Reed. A Proton 1 2. Confirmation of the result for the four hours of the Algarve. United also sports the overall winners. Cool Racing take Pro Am in LMP2. WTM by Rinaldi, the winners in LMP3. And victory, a 1 2 result in GTE going to Proton Competition. It's time for the final roll of the dice the four hours of Portimao, the second race this weekend, and the season finale. And it is going to be very very wet. In LMGTE, Ryan Hardwick sees pole position in the number 16 Proton Competition Porsche. In LMP3, it was Julian Gale who put RLRM Sports number 15 car on pole. In LMP2 Pro-Am, Giorgio Rosa claimed pole position for Proton competition in number 99. And Paul-Luc Chatan claimed an amazing pole position for Edex Sport. Number 28 starts at the very front of the field.
One minute board on the grid. One minute board on the grid. We remind drivers we're starting behind the safety car. Rain lights on. There will be no formation lap. The race time will start at the green flag at 14.30.00. After almost an hour of weather delay, finally the race was getting underway. I cannot see anything, and this is a slow thing. Slow thing. Yeah, copy, copy. Too much water outside. Copy, copy. Very, very the, the final corner is so much water coming down the hill, it's crazy. I'm at 100 kilometers per hour. Red flag, red flag, all cars to stop in line. It is not possible to drive. We have resumed the race behind the safety car. Finally, conditions just about raceable. The field underway once more here in Portimao. But the four hours has become three while they waited for the skies to clear and the track to dry. Even so, track surface very wet indeed and lots of spray in the air. This is not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Safety car in at the end of this lap. Safety car in at the end of this lap. No overtaking before the line. So here we go. Safety car lights are out. He will scramble away. And there is the pole sitter from Edex Sport. Paul Lafargue leads the field. Phil Hansen in the United car in second. Down into the first corner they come as we get green flag racing underway. Side by side for fourth. Duquesne and into Europol. And a challenge for the lead. Phil Hansen straight through on the inside into turn two. He'll climb the hill as the leader. And there's Lafargue. He's off at the hairpin. He is losing places as Panis and Duquesne battle for second. The Duquesne car comes out on top. And look at the Algar Pro car of Kiffin Simpson moving up the order as well. There he is. And he's ahead of the Edex Sport car. Trouble for Cool Racing, the 37 car, Alex Kwanyi facing the wrong way. A big looping spin at the top of the hill, just nowhere near the grip he was hoping for. On board with the Duquesne car, number 30. And that, I'm afraid, is Rene Binder. Made a good start, dropped it off the road. Trouble as well in the GC car, that's the 77 machine of Christian Reed at the hairpin. Here comes Duquesne, chasing Algar Pro, Rene Binder attacking Kiffin Simpson. Simpson goes down the inside, and Rene Binder, the long way round the outside, moves up to third. Even in these streaming conditions, drivers have to get on with it. There's the Panis car, Manuel Maldonado stays out wide. Rene Binder lunges to the inside. Maldonado looking to cut back as they come up the hill. Does he find better traction? Yes, he does. Can he get the overlap? Yes, he can. Can he stay there? No, he can't. So Rene Binder remains in second. Phil Hansen leads just a little up the road now. Replay, this is an LMP317, the new champions. Ajahn Keeler being turned around by Eric Chouye. Phil Hansen flying away at the front of the field, absolutely destroying the rest of them. Rene Binder now nearly 14 seconds back. They've only been racing 15 minutes. Here's a battle between Formula Racing's Johnny Larson and Takeshi Kimura in the yellow car guys, Kessel Racing Ferrari. So it's red on red, though neither Ferrari is red. Great battle for fourth place. Kessel Racing car losing out a fraction. Johnny Larson moving up to fourth. Kimura down to fifth. Pro-Am leader Giorgio Roda. Car rebuilt by Proton after that big crash on Friday. Alexander Matchell for Team Virage chasing in second place. <laughs> 
Second place battle in GTE. That's Duncan Cameron around the outside. Jens Muller. The Aston Martins were strong in the rain on Friday. Looks like they are again on Sunday. Cool racing down the inside of Edex Sports. This is for sixth place in LMP2. And the switcheroo didn't quite work. The cool racing car just outrunning itself a little under braking. Vladislav Lomko, big touch and a weave there. Caught the nose of Paul Lafargue as he tried to shut the door on the Edex Sport car. Driver change, George Eroda to Jonas Reed, the son of Christian Reed, the Proton boss. Duncan Cameron challenging for the lead here in GTE, sweeping around the outside in the first corner. That's a good move. Defensive work from Ryan Hardwick in the Proton Porsche did not work. That car second in Friday's race in a Proton 1-2. Driver change as Marina Sato takes over from Phil Hansen in the lead United Autosport car in trouble. Racing Team Turkey again in trouble at Sally Olic with a 66 JMW Ferrari of Martin Berry. Looks like two into one did not go. Battle for second in Pro-Am. Mathieu Vaxivier in the white and black of AF Corsa and Sebastian Alvarez in the number three DKR engineering car. Look at that around the outside by Vaxivier. That's a big move up to turn 13 and found the grip somehow. The skies look clear in one direction, very gray in the other. Sun is out. Track is still very wet though. With a red stripe, that's the number 11 Euro international car, Matt Bell. Just keeps his nose in front of the Ferrari under braking and then uses the power to rush away up the hill. Spirit of Race leading in GTE as the 93 Proton Porsche stops. Michael Fassbender on board and contact with the Aston Martin of Arnold Robin, the TF Sport car. George Heffica exiting the pits in the Kessel Racing Ferrari, clatters into Jax Hawksworth and the number 20 Algarve Pro Pro-Am car. Pro-Am lead battle, Matthias Besch for Nielsen. 10 second penalty for a pit stop infringement, but he's just gone by AF Corsa for the lead of the class. So Nielsen move up one, but they have a penalty that will be served at the next stop. Matthias Besch from Mathieu Vaxivier. Again, two real pro drivers here. Vaxivier goes the long way round the outside. Besh finds the road blocked by an LMP3 machine, can't get the power down, loses ground. AF Corsa back in front in Pro-Am. Team of Van der Helm, Nicolas Pino, second place battle here. Pino on the inside into Duquesne car. And that's a good move, but the next corner's a tight right, and that works in the favor of the Panis Carve team in Van der Helm. Now the long, never-ending downhill right-handers that end the lap. Here we go, plunging over the brow. Decaying back up to second place. And here comes the Panis car, trying to take advantage of the JMW Ferrari and does. The Decaying car got held up a little. New champions, Algarve Pro, on the attack, looking for third place. James Allen sides inside Team and Van der Helm. That's the second time Van der Helm's lost a spot at Turn 13 up the hill. He needs to work on that aspect of the lap at least. And this racing car being left there by Algarve Pro. Looks like they are ready for a pit stop. And on board with Team and Van der Helm. Oh, and again at 13. We were uh, trying different lines to see where we had a bit more grip. Uh, the track was changing lap after lap. Uh, we, we had a few fights with with Proton at the start of the stint, that was uh, a lot of fun. So I think we were going to be in the mix. Uh, I think that's the positive side of it, that uh, we showed progress. Alex was on pole yesterday. Today we were looking like uh, we could we could be on the podium and we're going to take those positives. Trouble for Nielsen Racing, the number seven car, that's Ryan Harper Ellum. What happens here? Does he get hit from behind? There's the Algarve Pro car on the outside. I'm not quite sure where that dramatic change of direction came from. And that is the end of the race for the number seven Nielsen car. Driver is okay, but gutted.
Nelson Piquet Jr. in the gravel in the 21 United Autosport car. And that is a long way off. What happens here? Dives down the inside of the DKR number four LMP3 machine and the car just swaps ends on him in the compression. Right up to the barriers. Safety car is out. We're with Duquesne. Pit stop for Louis Delatraz just before the end of the safety car. Back to green flag racing. United lead. Duquesne in second. Edex bought the blue car in third. Algar Pro, blue and black in fourth. With a P3 car between them. <laughs> yeah. It's hard watching, isn't it? And it's just as close in GTE. AF Caution Nielsen, 1 2 in LMP2 Pro Am. Lots of battles up and down the order. DKR and Cool Racing, that's the battle for third. DKR with the yellow, black and red. And Cool Racing's Marty Jakobsen down the inside. And Nathaniel Berton in the DKR car. And it looks like the Aston's going by them both. They have slowed each other up and there's contact with the GMB Aston. Around goes Berton. And restarts like this with the classes all mixed up. That is so common. Replay here at the hairpin, change for second place in GTE, Julian Andlauer in the black and gold Proton Porsche, passed by Elise Dupal with a big rub in the air of course of Ferrari. Lou Delatraz, the red car racing Team Turkey, chasing down Bent Viscal in the Proton 99 machine, there he is on our right. On the left hand side of the picture now, down to the hairpin, Delatraz up to fourth place in the LMP2 Pro-Am category at least for the moment. Just about has enough to stay on the outside up the hill and take the place in the right-hander that follows. That's Ben Hanley for Nielsen, was second in LMP2 Pro-Am. He's just been passed by the cool racing car of Malte Jakobsen. Back on terra firma, Hanley. Final stop for Duquesne, Neil Jani stays in, all the big guns in for the final stints of the race. Edex Sport the leader, coming down the straight, 22 United Autosport, and that is Ollie Jarvis. Neil Jani comes out of the pit lane and Jarvis goes in front. Top two in the pits on the right of your screen, Edex Sport on the left, Panis also reserving fuel. So here comes the United car down the straight, Duquesne behind, out comes the Edex Sport car and it's Oli Jarvis, sweeps around the nose of Paul Chatin. he takes the lead of the race. Edex Sport in second and Panis and Duquesne battling for third and here they are, side by side, Neil Jarni around the outside of Jot van Oyten, van Oyten saying no way, but yo contact, Jarni in the Duquesne car. Around goes Van Eitert, and that is Pauli Chatin from second in the gravel. Well, let's take a look at the reverse angle. Gianni will say that Van Eitert tried to shut the door too late. The stewards will decide on that, but from Van Eitert's viewpoint, look in front, that's the Edexport car going off at the same time. Late pit stop for our LMP3 leader, Adam Ali, for Euro International. He should stay out front. Duquesne with a drive through penalty for Neil Jarney. That's their hope of victory gone. They won't finish on the podium now. Neil Jarney will feel that Jot van Eitert shouldn't have shut the door that late, but the stewards have made their decision. That's a tough break for the Duquesne team. Race leader in LMP2 Pro-Am is Ben Barnico for AF Corsa. Four seconds back, Cool Racing's Malte Jakobsen, the Dane on a charge, looking to try and take victory here. And there's trouble. Valdemar Eriksson for RLRM Sport in the barriers. And he has gone straight off at turn one, all the way across the gravel and hard impact. Full course yellow for clear up operations. Cool Racing's Malte Jakobsen second behind this man, Ben Barnicote for AF Corsa in LMP2 Pro Am. Basically, whoever finishes in front of the other will be the Pro Am champion. And there's more trouble. That's Cool Racing's 47 car. Toyota World Endurance star Jose Maria Lopez in the gravel. And that is Oscar Tunio, WTM by Rinaldi. There's Olivier Panis, watching from the Panis Racing Garage. Full course yellow is out. Ooh. 
And very nearly went by Alex Lynn there in the Three, Algar Pro Car. Two, one, full course yellow is removed, full course yellow is removed. Back with Lynn versus Van Eyten, and Jutt Van Eyten getting a really good start there, but get held up behind that GTE battle. So Alex Lynn stays clear, but down at the hairpin, here comes Van Eyten, oh, misses the apex and half spins. Touch with the Algarve Pro Car of Alex Lynn, he stays just about on. Oh, and that's the reaction from the two garages. Take a look again, Jot van Eitert for Panis down the inside of Alex Lynn. Little contact. Lynn, I think, senses it's coming and just has enough in hand and enough runoff area to stay out of the gravel. Final lap of the race, final lap of the double race weekend, final lap of the season for United Autosports. And Oli Jarvis is going to head them to a double race winning visit to Portimao. Whatever the weather and the, the opposition have thrown at them, United have come out on top. They won on Friday. They are going to win again on Sunday. A remarkable long weekend for United Autosports. And the 22 car starting to regain the form that saw it sweep the board a few seasons ago. Panis Racing still chasing Algarve Pro for second. Jupp van Eyten all over the back of Alex Lynn, but he's done enough. On home soil, they have done it. Algar Pro Racing are the LMP2 champions for 2023. Kevin Simpson, James Allen, and Alex Lynn. Yeah, no, it's, it's so amazing. I'm just so thankful for my teammates, Kevin and James, and the team Algar Pro Racing. I think all year we've been super strong, and uh, yeah, we closed it out today. Stu and Sam Cox's Algar Pro Racing claim the title ahead of United Autosports with Panis third in the points. Pole position, the race win and the title in GTE goes to the 16 Proton crew, Ryan Hardwick, Zach Rubichon and Alessio Picariello. Yeah, this was uh, this was a dream come true. I mean, my first season racing in Europe and, and racing at this level also. And uh, I knew it was going to be a special year, um, you know, with it being the final year of GTE. And, uh, you know, I've just always tried in my racing career to surround myself with the best people possible. It starts with co-drivers and also the team. And I think I found that, you know, here obviously with Zach and Alessio. I couldn't ask for two, you know, better drivers to be with. I learned so much from both of these guys. And, uh, and then also the team. I mean, Proton Competition, Chris Reed and Michael and their whole family, they've it feels quite special. A big year for Proton competition, first and second in the title race ahead of Iron Lynx with the number 60 Porsche. Rounding out the season with victory in the four hours of Portimao, AF Corsa claim the Pro-Am Championship too. It's another endurance racing title for Francois Perodo. This one shared with Mathieu Vaxivier. Yeah, it's uh, incredible. You know, um, it's been an amazing year with these two guys. Had so much fun and it's sad that I had to miss a couple of races and uh, don't get to join them in the championship party tonight. But, um, you know, it was still an incredible season and that was an incredibly tough end race at the end there. None of us expected it to be dry. We had a rain set up on the car, so it wasn't easy, but so happy I could uh, get it to first place and deliver the championship for these guys. It's been a special year. Celebrations for AF Corsa as they claim the LMP2 Pro-Am team's title. Cool Racing, the runners-up, Racing Team Turkey finishing in third. No title this year for the 22 team from United Autosports, but a second consecutive win for Sato, Hansen and Jarvis. And that is a great way to finish off their season. Um, I did my job and we, I was able to pull a, a decent sized gap at the beginning and then um, yeah, these guys did a great job, Ollie, at the end to hang on in, in drying conditions on slicks. And, and you know, all those AFCYs and safety cars were making me a bit nervous, but um, my teammates and United did a great job this weekend, I think. 
United stand on the top step of the podium with Algar Pro second and the champions Panis Racing in third. The final LMP3 win of the season going to Matt Bell and Adam Alley in the number 11 car from Euro International. And that was enough to move them up to the runner-up spot in the title chase behind Champions Cool Racing. Number 22 from United Autosport, the overall winner. In Pro-Am, AF Corsa claimed victory and the title. Euro International winning the final LMP3 race of the season. And Proton Competition claimed the last GTE victory as they finished 20th overall. As ever, the 2023 European Le Mans series closes as we salute our champions at the annual awards gala. And it all begins again in Barcelona in April. The chase for new titles and more glory. We will see you there.